Hello and welcome everyone to a new review of a game I've recently played. Uh, it is called Hidden Agenda. It is from the developers of Supermassive Games. Now, you may not know the name, but they were actually behind the Until Dawn series. Now, I think that was released probably about two years ago now, but that was a really awesome horror, um, pick your own adventure sort of thing. Now, Hidden Agenda is very much like that, but if you don't know, it's part of the PlayLink series uh, for the PS4, which essentially allows you to simply just log in, uh, use your mobile phone, you've got to download it, an, an additional app, it's all free, uh, and essentially you can use that as a device. It's, a, it's really good to um, make some party games. I've tried uh, Knowledge is Power, which is really good. That's sort of just a trivia game. Uh, but we're here to talk about Hidden Agenda, uh, and I just want to sort of give a quick uh, plot summary. Uh, essentially, it is a interactive movie. Now, before you sort of get put off by that, uh, there is as much gameplay in this as there is an episode of a Telltale game. So, in terms of gameplay, you, you definitely have stuff to do. And this story is engrossing enough that the fact that you're just sort of choosing decisions and uh, making your way through the story, it's completely fine. Now, the game itself can take about two hours to beat. But as soon as you're done, you want to go through again. And I'll explain to you why. Uh, so, the game is about hunting down the trapper killer. Essentially... This killer is getting victims, uh, putting them somewhere, they're rigging them up to essentially explode or take out the first responding officers. So essentially, he's setting traps uh, to not only take out the person that he's trying to kill, but also try and take out some police officers at the same time. You sort of jump between a couple of characters. Uh, there's Detective Becky Marnie and uh, Felicity, who I believe is the DA. And essentially, you make choices. Uh, talking to people, your reactions to what they're saying to you, decisions whether to, you know, go over here. If you've played Until Dawn, you understand what I'm talking about. You have options to sort of hide away, uh, maybe sort of make a move on someone. All that sort of thing is here. And instead of the butterfly effect, which was in Until Dawn, it's called uh, the ripple effect in this. So on your app, which is really well done, by the way, you have uh, your logbook, which sort of just gives you brief dot points of you know, with the story, and as the game separated into three parts, you can sort of use that uh, break time in between each part to really just sort of go over your options, and as I said, this is easily a party game, you can get like a couple of people going, make decisions as you go, and have that sort of competitive nature. Now, I haven't played the competitive side of it, but you can have that sort of hidden agenda to try and get the ending you want, or make decisions and lean towards certain aspects depending on what your hidden agenda is. But you can simply just go through solo, uh, which I've done, and it was a really enjoyable story. And like I said, once I made all these decisions, the first time I didn't actually capture the Trapper Killer. So I wanted to go through again, try different options, and really see how the story diverts depending on what you choose. And it actually is quite vast. Uh, there was a lot of scenes that I hadn't seen at all. There were certain characters that were big in my second playthrough that barely got mentioned in the first one. And I, I love it. I, f I feel like after two playthroughs, I still haven't seen everything in the game, which is a real testament. Because if you're playing a Telltale game, you maybe go through twice, you've probably seen everything. And like it's really just option A or B, and essentially you end up getting the same story. It's just a certain character is different. Uh, and it's a different character giving you said mission or giving you said statement. This doesn't feel like it in Hidden Gender. Um, don't get me wrong, on the second playthrough, I did notice where some scenes were sort of patched together, almost stitched together like a quilt, where, you know, in the first playthrough, this is what happened, you wouldn't have noticed any different. But when you go through a second time, you sort of notice those dialogue changes, and you're like, hmm, they simply just added that. And you sort of see the, the faces sort of just quickly cut, adding that dialogue. The only thing I'd say if people, you know, were put off about this would be the fact that, you know, you are experiencing the same story. So if you go through multiple times, you know, if you're playing with different people, it might be a better experience. But if you're playing yourself, like I said, I played solo twice and I enjoyed it. But it really comes down to how much variation you want with your story. And uh, if the gameplay of, you know, simply trying to do some quick time events and making choices is enough for you. So really keep that in mind. But as a party game, in terms of, you know, being able to do something different and not your typical mini game collection or sort of trivia game, Hidden Agenda's right up your alley, like, in terms of something different. 
It gives you that interactive story, a really well told and well acted story with many options that you feel like you're actually playing a part in it. That's the one thing I don't feel like movies can deliver in terms of, you know, really being inside the story, interacting with everything that's happening. And this is a real culmination of what gaming can do. And for the price, I think I paid about $16, $17. You cannot go wrong if you're just going to play this on your own. It's around the price of a DVD and you're still getting that sort of, you know, you've got trophies, it has a platinum trophy, you're encouraged to make these different decisions, you want to go through it again, and as I said, multiplayer game as well. So uh, if you invite your friends over, all they need is a mobile phone, you don't need a, the hassle of trying to get <laughs> four or five controllers going. I had a wonderful time with Hidden Agenda. Um, I'd love to know what you think of Hidden Agenda in the comments below. And I'd also like to hear if you've played any of the other PlayLink games. Definitely check those out. If you're into sort of multiplayer games and you don't have many controllers, uh, PlayLink is your best option. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have enjoyed this Hidden Agenda of review. Hopefully get a few more reviews coming very, very soon. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.